Okay, so for this last lesson, we're going to talk about the pentatonic scale and some different ways that I like to use it in my own playing. Um, this first example is going to be at an A minor pentatonic, and what we're going to do is instead of playing across the across the neck, across all six strings, what we're going to do is pick two strings and play up the length of the neck. And when we do that, it gets this kind of sound. And to me, that's not, um, it's not as predictable as some of the licks that you would get just staying out of this standard pent pentatonic box that we all know. So what I'm doing is I'm picking any two random notes. It could literally be any two notes out of a pentatonic scale. But I'm going to go with my fifth and my flat seventh. So I'm just going to slide into my fifth fret B string, then hit the third fret E. And just keep on taking these two notes to the next note of the pentatonic scale. So from there, I'm going to slide from five to eight and then hit five on my E string. Then slide from eight to 10 and hit eight on my E string. From 10 to 13, hit 10 on my E string. Then from 13 to 15, and hit 12 on my E string. And then from 15 to 17, hit 15 on my E. And then I'm going to end by sliding from 17 to 20, hit my root note, which is 17th fret E string, and then bend this 20th fret up a whole step to my root note. So really slow. I really like the way that sounds. Um, now let's look at a different, um, it's kind of the same concept, but what we're gonna do, these two notes are spaced pretty close together, minor third apart. So what we're gonna do is take three notes this time and space the notes further apart to, um, so there's wide intervals in, in between each of the notes. Let's go with these three. And again, it could be any three random notes that are spaced widely apart, but I'm going to go with my A, my D, and my G, which is my root, my fourth, and my flat seven. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, just play these notes one at a time, and then take them up the length of the fretboard to get this sound. And... I get questions about licks similar to this, asking me what kind of, you know, scales or arpeggios that I'm using, if I can break it down, and more often than not, they're surprised because it's, most of the time, I'm just using the pentatonic scale. Either the pentatonic or the pentatonic with your natural second. But for this lesson, or for this example, it's all pentatonic. So we're going to start off by sliding into your root which is your 5th fret E string, so slide from 3 to 5, and then hit 3 on your B, and then 5 on your D. And this whole example is going to be on the E, the B, and the D strings. So, 5, 3, 5, or actually 3, 5, 3, 5. Slide that up to the next note of the pentatonic scale, which is going to be the 7th fret D. So 7, 5, 8, slide that to 10, 10, 8, 10, slide that up to 12, and go 12, 10, 12, so let's look at that slow. Slide that up to 15, 15, 13, 12. And then we're back where we started, up an octave, which is 17, 15, and an end with your root note, 17. One more time slow. And 
and up to speed. So this next example is something I use a lot and it's one of my favorite things to do and we're still out of A minor pentatonic and we're still going up the length of the fretboard out of our pentatonic scale but what we're going to do is combine slides and bends to get this sound. And so the concept is really simple. We're just sliding into one note. Um, we're going to start off with these notes, our E, our G, and our B, or the notes we're going to be in bending up to. So you're going to slide from as low as you can into this seventh fret G string, and then bend it up a whole step, and then hit the E on your fifth fret B string. So you're bending to an E, and then hitting the E on your B string. We're going to do the same thing with the G note. The same thing with A. So here we're bending from 10 of a whole step and here 12 of a whole step. Now we're going to across and bend from on our B string, B string from 13 up a whole step to 15. And then we'll end it by bending back into our E note. So we're going to bend from 13 or from 15 up to 17. And then hit the high E 12th fret. And you can end that however you want. Or you can keep that pattern going. But it's, like I said, a really simple trick. It just creates a really cool sound combining those bends with the slides. So for this next example, I'm going to take a pattern of notes. We'll still stay in A minor pentatonic, but I'm going to take a scale pattern. Let's say this. Just a pretty basic, simple pattern, but what I'm going to do, instead of running across the neck, again, I'm going to go up the length of the neck. This time I want to use slides. So instead of this, I get this. And to me, that's a, just a really cool sound. It takes a standard cliche scale pattern, and with adding those slides and going up the length of the neck, it just gives it a completely different sound. Even though it's the same notes and same pattern, it just sounds cooler with those slides. So I'm going to start off by sliding 5th fret, pull off to the 3rd, and go 5th fret B string, and back to the 3rd, high E. And then just pull off 5 to 3 on your B. And that's the whole pattern. And here I'm going to hammer onto my fifth fret, but just as soon as I hit that string, as soon as I hit the hammer, I'm going to slide up to the next note of the scale. So you hammer it not even long enough to let it ring. And just keep that pattern going. So we're on the 8th fret, pull off to 5th fret B, 7 G, 5 B, 7 to 5 G. Slide up to the next position, will be 9th fret, pull off to 7, 10 on your D, 7 on your G, pull off 10 to 7 on your D. Here we're going to slide up to 12, so hammer, hammer 10, slide 12, and again, when I say hammer, not long enough to let the note ring out. Just hammer, and as soon as your finger hits the string, then slide up to the next position. 
So um, 12, 10 to your A string, 12, 10 on your D, 12, 10 on your A. Then hammer 12, slide 15. You go 15, 12 on your E, 15, 12 on your A, and then 15, 12 on your E. And then end with your root note A string. Or you could slide up again and end with your root note E string, 17th fret, or 12th fret A string. So let me do that really slow, the whole lick. A little bit quicker. And up to speed. So that does it for this series of lessons. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you were able to learn something. Um, with any of these licks and any of the five lessons, if you're having trouble, remember just start off really slow with a metronome or drum machine. Start off really slow and make sure you can play everything clean and in time, and then gradually work up speed. And um, with any of these licks, the important thing to remember is even if you can't do it, then pay attention to the concept or the theory behind each lick so you can use that to come up with some ideas of your own. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. hope to see you around soon.